All right, so welcome back. I uh, hope everybody's doing well in their uh, confinement. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look today at Chapter 11, Arguments by Analogy. An analogy is basically just to say that A is like or similar to B. <clears throat> You're basically comparing two things. Maybe that's because you want to draw a conclusion based upon them. Maybe it's because you want to um, simply clarify something or make it easier to understand. But in any event, an analogy is simply a simile. It's a matter of saying that something is like something else. Now, the chapter 11 is much, much larger than it really needs to be. It's, it's a really long chapter. Um, and so I'm going to simplify it for you here as best as I can. It begins, essentially, by laying out the main types of analogies. There are figurative analogies, deductive argument by analogy, inductive argument by analogy. And many times these are perfectly acceptable, but of course if you misuse them there would also be fallacies that we'll have to talk about as well. So I want to start by taking a look at the idea of a figurative analogy. A figurative analogy is used to clarify a complicated issue, to offer an explanation, but it's not intended to yield a conclusion. So a figurative argument is not, a figurative analogy rather is not really an argument. It's not trying to prove anything to you. It is simply a matter of trying to make it easier to comprehend by giving an analogy of something to something else that you might understand better. So, for example, when Forrest Gump says life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Um, when we make that comparison of life to a box of chocolates, it doesn't immediately seem obvious, but the fact is you have that box of chocolates, and you reach in, you grab one, and you don't know if you're going to get a caramel center or a nut center or, or you know, whatever flavor you might have, marzipan. Um, you don't know what's going to come out, and the same thing applies in terms of life. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get out of that life. It's simply a matter of the choices that you make. Right. So that's an example of a figurative analogy. Uh, another good example, actually, if you guys have uh, read the book The Killer Angels or perhaps watched the film Gettysburg that was based on that book, uh, in there George Pickett uses the analogy of a gentleman's club to explain the notion of secession. Basically, he says that you know the southern states' desire to secede from the Union uh, is no different than someone who is part of a gentleman's club. If you join this club, you have gone into it agreeing to a certain set of rules, and uh, you've agreed to abide by those rules. But if the club starts changing those rules, you should have the right to resign your membership. And his argument is that it should be exactly the same thing uh, with regards to the union. Uh, when the states entered into this union, they agreed to do so under a certain set of rules, and if those rules are changed, then those states should have the right to resign their membership. So he tries to draw that uh, analogy. Uh, of course, one of the other characters makes the state that George has a, a real habit of trivializing very complex issues by doing that. Uh, but in any event, that's the idea of a figurative analogy. It's simply there to clarify the issue, to make it easier to understand, but it's not trying to prove anything. Well, we also have, then, arguments uh, of analogy that are, are trying to prove something, part of a, a uh, argument in and of itself. So the deductive and inductive arguments by analogy are intended to yield a conclusion either with certainty for deductive or probability with inductive. Um, we want to draw a conclusion. Deductive argument by analogy, remember with deduction you want to yield certainty. You want to make sure that a person is uh, very, very clear that the outcome is absolute. And so we want to yield that uh, conclusion by drawing an analogy to help us understand it. And so here's a little example for you. We would think it wrong if aliens were to inflict pain on humans in the process of raising them for food. Therefore, it is wrong for us to inflict pain on animals in the process of raising them for food. So this person is clearly making an argument 
that we need to be more compassionate, more caring towards animals. And they're doing so by drawing an analogy to what might be the case if we as humans were on the receiving end of that type of treatment. Would we simply think it acceptable if some alien race who enjoyed eating human flesh were to raise human beings in barbaric conditions, uh, were to abuse them and misuse them simply for the purpose of raising them for food? Well, if we feel that way, then by analogy, we should have that same sense of sympathy that uh, we want to show towards humans. We should show that towards the animals because they have feeling as well. They can experience pain. They can experience loss and suffering just in the same way that human beings could. Therefore, we need to treat those animals with compassion. If that you know, doesn't necessarily entail going over to a vegetarian diet, but it could mean that making sure that as we raise the animals that they are treated uh, with, with care, that they are treated with compassion and kindness, uh, that they're not abused in any way. You know, so we are creating an argument for the, the kindness towards animals, but we're doing so simply by showing an analogy to help it again become easier to understand. The um, deductive argument from analogy and then the inductive argument from analogy is basically the same thing except with a, um, uh, an inductive claim where you're not dealing with the idea of a certainty but with a probability. Uh, both of those, if used correctly, are acceptable. But we do have a fallacy, actually we have a couple of fallacies that are associated with this if we misuse the idea of analogy. The primary uh, issue here is what we call the fallacy of faulty analogy. And the fallacy of faulty analogy occurs when the situation or circumstances being compared are not similar enough for the analogy to hold. In other words, make sure that you're at least comparing apples to oranges, not apples to airliners. Okay? Um, the situation has to be one that's similar enough to make the analogy work. And, you know, I, I give you this idea here. I want to say here's an apple, here's an airliner. Those things are two completely different things. There's no similarity between them whatsoever. But if we compare apples to oranges, they're both fruits. They both have a certain amount of nutrients to them and so on. There are things that are similar, right? And you have to have that similarity to make the analogy work. Now, in the example that I have here for you, you can see that we are comparing two things initially that are similar, two cars. But the issues that we are comparing about those cars are not really relevant to the conclusion that we're trying to draw, and that's why it commits the faulty analogy. Bob's car is blue and has leather seats. Tom's car is also blue and has leather seats. Since Bob's car gets great gas mileage, Tom's will as well. Well, the fact that these two cars are both blue and have leather seats doesn't have anything to do with the gas mileage of that vehicle. You need to know what make and model that is, uh, what, what the size of the engine is. You know, there are other issues that you would need to compare to make that analogy hold. But simply the fact that you have a blue car with leather seats doesn't mean that it's the two cars are going to be similar enough that you can draw this analogy. So that's the idea there. You want to make sure that uh, the, the analogy that you're drawing is one that's strong enough to hold. Uh, if not, then it commits this fallacy of faulty analogy. The last fallacy that uh, is mentioned here is a, kind of a specific one, but it's called the fallacy of analogical literalism. The fallacy of analogical literalism occurs when one takes the analogy too literally and says that A and B are not exactly alike. Okay. Um, a comparison of apples to apples, that's not an analogy, because you're not comparing two similar types of things, but rather two identical things. The comparison of apples to oranges is an analogy, because it's an attempt to compare two things of a similar type. Okay, And that's the point. An analogy is a comparison of two similar things. It's not a comparison of two identical things. Okay. So, 
take a look at this example. You say that oppression in society is just like the pressure in a boiler, but they're not the same thing, so the analogy doesn't hold. Well, we make that analogy that oppression in society is like the pressure in a boiler. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean that if you keep building up the pressure in a boiler and building it up and building it up without any outlet, eventually that boiler is going to explode. And as Dr. King pointed out, um, the oppression within society is exactly the same way. If you keep building that oppression and building it and building it, yes, people are going to endure it for a while. They're going to endure it as long as they can. But eventually that pressure builds up without any outlet. It's going to explode in violence. Now, the person that's complaining against this says that, well, these are not the same thing, so the analogy doesn't hold. But that is committing a fallacy of analogical literalism to say that because they're not meant to be identical things. It's meant to imply that one is similar to the other, and clearly that analogy is just like that. It is similar enough that the analogy is going to hold. Okay, So we don't want to commit the fallacy of faulty analogy. We don't want to commit the fallacy of analogical literalism. So go ahead, uh, that, that's basically as huge as this chapter is, that's basically all there is really within it. Um, but if you uh, take your book to page 186, uh, exercise 11-4, uh, we're going to try a few of these problems here. And um, <clears throat> it says, the section of exercises includes questions concerning types of analogy, figurative, deductive, and inductive questions about the analysis of legitimate and fallacious uh, analogies, and questions that cover the various fallacies associated with the analogies. Uh, read and uh, be, do the specific things for each exercise. So if we look at number one, it says marijuana is a lot like alcohol. Since the production, sale, and use of alcohol is legal, we ought to make the production, sale, and, uh, and use of marijuana also legal. And then it asks, what type of analogy is that? What is the principle implied by the analogy? Is it a good analogy? Um, basically, if we look at it, we see we're saying that marijuana is like alcohol. Um, we're drawing an analogy between those two things. And there are similarities, right? Both of those are uh, substances that are uh, used for people to make them feel better, to produce a sense of high or euphoria. Uh, the analogy is that since the sale and use of alcohol is legal, we should make the production and sale and use of marijuana also legal. So since we've legalized one, we should legalize the other one. Well, that's a deductive argument based upon analogy, and it is certainly a legitimate analogy, I think. Uh, because the two things are similar enough, and if we are going to produce uh, the, the legality of one, we should produce the legality of the other. Okay. Uh, look at number two. It says, alcohol is a lot like marijuana. Since the production, sale, and use of marijuana is illegal, we ought to make the production, sale, and use of alcohol also illegal. So now we're supposed to compare the first and second argument. On what point would a person giving argument one agree with a person giving argument two? What's the crucial point where they would disagree? Well, the primary area where they would, I mean, they would, they would agree in the comparison, right, of alcohol to marijuana. Um, but they would disagree with regards to the principle. Because in the second case, uh, they want to say that because marijuana is illegal, we should make alcohol illegal. Right? Uh, so the first one favors the legalization. The second one rejects it. And that's the primary difference. Let me do one more with you here. Uh, number three, Paula says, drinking alcohol is like looking through rose-colored glasses. It distorts our view of reality and makes us less capable of dealing with our real problems. Paul says, that's not true. Drinking alcohol is nothing like wearing glasses. After all, you drink with your mouth and not with your eyes. And so if we look at that, it says, is that criticism of the analogy legitimate or fallacious? Uh, I would say that what you have here is a fallacy of analogical literalism. 
Paul is looking at that analogy that drinking alcohol is like looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. And he's trying to say that, no, it's not, because you drink with your mouth and you look with your eyes, uh, two very different things. Uh, they're not identical, therefore they don't apply. So he commits the fallacy of analogical literalism. So that's the basic idea there. So what I'd like you guys to do for homework uh, is the rest of these 4 through 11. And basically all you have to do is to figure out uh, what type of analogy is being used in each case and whether it is a legitimate example or a fallacy. So, um, yeah, so 4 through 11 on page 186 for the homework. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email and I'll get back to you. And uh, otherwise, uh, have a great day.